camera is cleared off. Hey everyone, Steven Statland here at Chop Chop Bang Bang in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And I'm just getting ready to do a little hair cutting for your entertainment. Hopefully I'm entertaining, I don't know. I tend to tell a lot of dad jokes, but, and even though I'm not a dad, I used to be a pet dad, but my baby died a few years ago. But anyways, let's see. How do we do this? I don't know, where are the comments? Hello. I'll figure it all out. Anyways, so, as you can see, I'm gonna start in the front and it's gonna be inspired by a round layer technique. If you've never used a round layer technique, it's where the shape is more convex. It goes from shorter to longer that way. So the other night I did something that was flat layered in the back and over everything from the sides was over directed and the top was something called anti head shape or from short to long this way. So now Let's see, we use the red one, it's a little bit easier to see. Now the shape will go this way. But I really like my screaming neon green color. <clears throat> so I've dampened the hair with a little of the Wilson Collective Don't Stress It, and I'll be using my shears that I got from the Wilson Collective. And I'm just going to go over the tops of my fingers and I'm going to build up weight at the apex. So you can see, this is going like that. My next section will be on this side and I'll do the same thing. I just lift everything up and I'm working short to long. building up weight at the um, crown or the apex. So you can see what's gonna happen is it's gonna be shorter here and a little bit longer back there. If I step out of the way, you can see that with the white background. If you all would say hello, if anybody would care to. I'm just trying to get the comment thing happening here. I don't know. I'm such a, oh, here we go. Now I can see who's on. Anyway, so again, using the Wilson Collective Don't Stress It, which is a nice leave-in conditioner. And I'm using something called a round layering technique. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to I want to see do, me, do a faux hawk. <laughs> if I could have one myself, I would. I was watching um, previews for the new troll movie that's coming out, and I always said if I was ever going to get a hairpiece, right? If I was ever going to get a rug, I would get. <laughs> I would get troll hair. Be hilarious. I could be like the. I can, and, and it would be a big joke because everybody would know it was fake. <laughs> Let me just, um, can you all see okay? It's gonna drop her a little bit. John Zakis is out there. Derek Cole is here. John Zakis, I wanna know if you uh, are doing any online jamming with um, drum kit. Had a really, uh, so again, working from short right here to long, using what's called a round layering technique, just on the top at the moment. Now, traditionally speaking, when you do, do a technique like this, you don't rip your mannequin head off the um, tripod. What you're doing is you're pivoting like a beach ball all the way around and as I move her so that you can see. So 
So we cut the top and now the next section's through the sides. Hey, Caitlin, how's California, girl? And you can see, so then we pivot. Can y'all see that okay? And you're, what you're doing is you're building up like a shape, almost like a light bulb. So it's really full here. And as a right-handed hairdresser, hey, Michael Levine, as a right-handed hairdresser, it's easier for me to work backwards with this technique. My left side is always my weakest side. So again, utilizing the round layering technique. Now this is classic form. A lot of ways it's taught now is that, that everybody's taught to cut it square and then they take the corners off and they round it out. Oh girl, I watched you buzz it, Caitlin. I was like, damn. She has, she has another career other than working in the cheese industry. So, I'm just going to lift. Can you see that? What I love about these these scissors I got from Philip Wilson is they have a spring in the fulcrum. So you're able to, they just glide through the hair. These hairlines and mannequins just are so annoying, truthfully. But, so, just let me know if you can see okay. I bought one of those fancy, um, phone mounts that you put on your car for like your dashboard or your um, windshield. Look at that, the phone's ringing. I bet you it's somebody trying to sell me credit card stuff. Hi Ashley, I'm doing a round layer technique. I started with the top and then pivoted out to the side. And then what I'll be doing is I'll build it, be building up weight in the back and at the crown. So the way the technique is taught classically is you're going from short into your fringe up into your crown. So the look is like this. So it's short to long that way. And what happens is you go, what you want to do is pivot, 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 like a beach ball. Can y'all see that? Okay, here we go. Should have worn the white shirt today. So whereas in my haircut the other day, everything was over-directed, the back was cut flat and then the sides were brought back almost like a wind tunnel. This will be working previous, the previous cut section back to the next section as a guide. I haven't seen Julie yet because of the quarantine, but it's so funny that you all are cousins. Talk about a small world. So Bev Chambers that's on here right now, I was in California years ago, right? I was working for Enjoy Hair Care and we stopped in a restaurant and she was, um, she took care of us. It took care of us really good. And we stayed in touch because of social media and Facebook, we stayed in touch all these years on Facebook and then I find out that her cousin is somebody that I know that lives down the street or was living in California for a while. Isn't that crazy? Just goes to show you the world is so small. So just let me know if you can see that okay. Hey Ivan, how are you? I saw you this morning on Instagram. So just working. A rounded layer technique. I 
Hey. Uh, definitely staying safe. Thank you all so much. The, um, you know, I come on here, you know, when I can. Been really busy trying to fill out applications and everything for potential funding for the business so that we don't get screwed or I don't get screwed by Big Brother or um, landlords, things like that. Nature, just making sure that my staff is getting the. Um, whatever they can get. Just so that we um, you know when I find out what's happening with the federal loans and state stuff, it's just a waiting process, it really sucks. You know, we can't even apply for anything statewide until the third and then again on the eighth. Oh, that's a good idea. Never thought about that. I could actually twist the whole thing. It goes to show you how much I work with a mannequin that much. It's definitely a, a learning curve. So working my way back. I'm back here at the crown now. I think one of the biggest problems with what's happening right now is a lot of us, we just don't know. And I think it's the feeling of not knowing that gives us the most um, anxiety or bad feelings. And it's like, you just want to know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work right back to the center back and then I'm gonna switch sides. So let's see if I can do this one more time. Yep, I can do that one more time. Look at that. I can pivot her. Unbelievable. I'm just getting used to working a mannequin. <laughs> okay. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving a lot in the perimeter. I haven't brought it too flat yet in the back. And I'm leaving that because I just want to have a little bit extra to work with in case I want to change my mind. Steve Rev Pro, how are you, buddy? So just for a recap, I'm doing a classic round layering technique. And what I mean by classic is the way that I was taught when I worked at Vidal Sassoon. Very short time, by the way. 18 months. We, um, we were taught to work short to long at the crown. So the shape is like a light bulb or convex shape. And the next shape, the next section you would pivot like a beach ball and you work to that corner. And then as you move around the head, each section is pivoted. So what you're doing is you're building up all this weight here. The haircut that I did the other day on this mannequin was everything was cut square in the back or flat layer, depending on how you like to use your terminology. So, and then the sides were actually over directed back. So I had a lot of weight in the front. And if you see that video, then her hair is much longer. But this gives you more of a, definitely more of a bowy, mullety type of feel. And I don't know many people who are not David Bowie fans. So, I mean, here we go. Don't let the state board see me drop that. Let's see. I need some water up there.
So I've got me this fancy kind of aerosol water bottle. It's like a air pumpy type of thing. Yes, you can put cologne in it and spray it up in the air and just dance underneath it, right? So I'm gonna flip sides and this is definitely my awkward side now working from this side. And so I'm trying to do my best to not stand in front so that you can see it. How many times you've been to a hair show and the person doesn't work it side to side, right? So here we go. We go from short from the fringe into the crown. And I happen to love doing short hair. I'm the person that hates blow drying. I don't mind blow drying if I can wrap dry it, you know, with the Denman brush and do my nice clean little geometric hair cutting. But man, if I gotta do big bouncy blowout, I just wanna die. <laughs> Cause it just feels like all I'm, all I'm doing is blow drying hair and I'm not cutting it. So, Gotta watch my own strength with this mannequin because I keep pulling her off the stand. I should wrap like a paper towel underneath in between. Hello, Sonia. So, just to recap, I'm doing a classic round layered haircut. And what I mean by classic is that most people are taught today to do a round layered haircut by cutting everything square, right? And then they take the corners off. So the way I was taught this when I was, when I had hair and I was a younger hairdresser, <laughs> um, the way that I was taught how to do this was to go short to long, short to long, like this. So you're building up weight and length in the crown. So it's almost like the shape is convex and like a light bulb. So now, let me see, we got a good angle for you. Just let me know if I'm getting in the way, all right? If you can see, okay. So this is what I mean by pivot. So I'm working back. Turn her in front so you can see a little bit better. So now I'm going to work my way back. And at the moment, I'm leaving a lot of weight and length in my perimeter. So I don't want to cut it and have it be too short. And then my next section, so I've pivoted from the top of the head and now I'm pivoting through the sides and I'm working my way from front to back. And by doing so, you're creating a round shape in the haircut. So regardless of what the length of the haircut is, you could do this on long hair too. focus really of a round layered haircut is so the hair goes back and the short hairs, the shorter hairs are giving the haircut support. I just love these new shears I got from Philip Wilson and the Wilson Collective. They have a spring in inside this the screw right here. 
So it gives you a lot more power when you're cutting. Let's see. Aaron Potts, blast from the past. What's happening? Hey, Donna. Hey, Carl. Ellen. So... working from here at the top or the crown on my way down. Let's see if I can get a better angle for you. It'd be really great if I had some music so when we Bluetooth the music in, it cuts the video. <laughs> Excuse me, let me get my fancy water bottle. So again, working from that point in the crown as I've pivoted around the head shape. And I'm working from that top all the way down in a rounded fashion, building up weight and length in the center of the haircut as we come all the way back. And pretty soon I'll be running out of hair. It's a really easy and super fast haircut to do on short hair. Like if I were on salon speed, you could fly through this. But just leaving that, you can see I've left all this weight and length at the bottom. So I'm right at the dead end of the center, center back of the haircut and you see I've run out of hair. Pretty much. Hey Amanda Ward, how are you? So here's my shape right now and it's basically well, it is, it's a classic round layer technique. And the round layer technique is when you are working with a mannequin that stays on the head, but I mean, on the stand, but you are, I would love to go like, bam, right? And everybody's going, man, he's messed up to his clients. Hey, David, how's Savannah? So I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use a wider comb just to go through the haircut a little bit more. Because it has less tension in the haircut. So what I did was I went from short to long this way, building up to the longest point in the crown. And it's like that kind of angle. And I pivoted off of that section, right? Hey, Amber. And pivoting. So what you're doing is you're pivoting. So normally I would quite, and I'm gonna just do it right now. This is my difficult side of the haircut because I am a right-handed hair cutter and my left side is definitely harder. So we pivoted, did our top sections, pivot, and now you're working from front to back. And you're building up weight and length in the crown and the back right here. So, 
one of the things everybody asks is, what, is how do you cross-check a round layered haircut? So how you cross-check a round layered haircut is you just go back the opposite way that you cut it. Same thing with your rounded graduation. Same thing if you were doing a flat, so if you're doing a flat layered haircut, right? And you're cutting everything square, you cut vertical, so you cross-check horizontal. So, hey Vicky. So what, just on the recap, on the rounded layered haircut, so it's short to long, longest part being right here, and then the same as this, and you're gonna work from the front to the back. The way that's taught classically, I mean, I've repeated myself many times and I'm sorry, just more people joining us. The way that it's taught classically, or the way I was taught when I, was, when I worked at Vidal Sassoon, was pivot like a beach ball all the way around. So now, I'm going to pivot like a beach ball all the way around. I'm gonna just go from the back to the front. And you can see it's just a bit of a dusting of the ends because it's, you know, if you're an OCD hair cutter like I am, and I'm really an OCD hair cutter, I'm like, the, it's never clean enough. It's never good enough. But over the years, I've had to really learn when to say when, right? So it's good enough. And then you work and you pivot your way back into that front section. And that's how you cross check it. Same thing. Can you see, I'll lower her a little bit more. You can see, so I can get in just a little bit and watch her fall off the stand, that'd be hilarious. So you have two different options, a couple different options, but what I did is I left all this, hey Anna, I left all this weight at the bottom of the haircut because I would like to leave it as a safety net. You know, a lot of times if you overcommit to something, um, you can't go back and do other things with it. So you see that everything is ha ha ha, David. David knows me a long time. He knows. He knows my disease. So we're going to. I'm gonna just kind of flatten it out a tiny bit here. All right? I'm just going to lift up just a tiny bit. It's not much. So now this is like pretty much where I want it. And there's some other things that you can do. So Yes, 20 years, brah. <laughs> so if you wanted to, and I'm going to just, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna bore the crap. Yeah, I'm totally into condensed cutting these days. I'm kinda over it. It's, it's funny, Anna, that you know, let me just pop her under the dryer real quick. I'm gonna put a little product in her hair and I'm gonna comb it flat, let it dry, and then I'm gonna come back when it's dry and personalize it. I'm gonna personalize the mannequin. So I'm really into the new Wilson Hair Collective product these days. And this is something called Style Both Ways. And it's a really light hair cream. And I just like it because it's different. It's got a really um, nice feel to it. It's very clean. 
Um, it's made with ingredients from rainforest in um, Peru, I believe. Anyways, I'm gonna pop her under the dryer so I don't bore the crap out of you with my um, hair drying. I'll be right back, give me two seconds. That's the good thing about being old school, right? I have a hood dryer over there. Oh, you're quite welcome. So what, it's, it's funny, because when, um, when I was a really young hairdresser, 1980, 15 years old, um, I got the opportunity to hang out with a guy named Richard Milstein, or Richard M, in uh, Washington, D.C. area, Bethesda, Maryland. Um, Rockville, Maryland, and he had been what's called a Paul Mitchell Bannard Associate. Now, this is when the Paul Mitchell product line was sculpting lotion, shampoo one, shampoo two, the conditioner, the spray, and th this is right around the time that Fast Drying Sculpting Spray and the Sculpting Foam came out. Hey, Vince, and, and this is obviously when Paul was still alive. And I think there was the perm. It was a bulk perm wave. And there was a, and we used to do these perms. We would wrap the hair in perm, we would perm it, and we'd send them home with um, conditioner. You know, we'd, we'd uh, rinse everything out, neutralize it, and spray it with um, Nexus Emergency. And we'd send them home in a hairnet, and the air would neutralize their hair. And we were doing that with the Paul Mitchell Perm Solution. And so, but the, the cool thing was, what I was talking about is that at, in Paul Mitchell's classes, he wouldn't use any blow dryers. The room would be super quiet. And they had these things called dryer drapes. And they would take the, they would be over the hood dryers, they'd put the sculpting lotion, they would pin curl it, they would set it, they would do whatever. Hey, Tony, thanks for tuning in, man. Uh, I'm just letting my mannequin dry under the, the old school hair dryer, wishing that I had this old dryer drape that was made by Paul Mitchell. And so this was what was really cool. And they would take the dryer drape off, the hair would be dry, they'd rough through it with their hands, do a little personalizing, use a little bit more product and send them on their way. And the hair was really in its most um, natural state as possible. And I thought that was always really cool. And um, I miss those days. <laughs> no, you know what it is. I'm not. I'm not much on the blow drying thing. I never really was. I always, I'm definitely more into the hair cutting aspect of it. But back to your question, Vince. What's happening, buddy? You know, it's like a kind of a. It's a beautiful day out here in Jersey, but it's a little bit cold. I found a spot near the beach where there's no wind, so I might go park it there for like an hour or so. Working on some stuff with my accountant and, um, you know, trying to get it all tied together because all the stuff that we have going on, you know, just making sure that everybody, you know, making sure whatever grants and loans and things that we can apply for and be able to take care of everybody. Dude, you know I love that beach. I wish I lived someplace warmer. I was thinking today, I was going, wow, there's got to be a spot somewhere in like the middle of the South Pacific that hasn't been affected by coronavirus, right? I'm going, how much is it going to cost me to go to one of these islands that there's nobody there? I was going, shit, if I could just get there. All right, let me check and see if she's dry. I'll be right back.
She's not quite dry yet, but I guarantee you it's going to totally be worth it. Hey, Colton, Adam, what's happening? Well, Anna, you did an air perm recently? Fun, right? So I just did, for anybody who's just joining, I just did a round layered haircut. I had, definitely had a feel of um, short to long, especially in the back. And she's just drying under a hood dryer right now because I found that in this situation, right, when you're doing a live, unless you're doing a dry haircut, you're boring the crap out of everybody with um, blow drying. And I, I personally hate blow drying. <laughs> Not my favorite thing in the world to do. Unless it's a wrap dry with the Denman brush or event brush or my hands. Like, if I got to do like some kind of round brush thing, I just want to just cry. Just kidding. I do it when I have to. I, was t I learned how to do it when, you know, in the beginning. But, um, oh, always funny. Whoever's a big heavy metal fan will appreciate this. Whenever I hear in the beginning, I always think of Shout at the Devil from Motley Crue. And, uh, Man, I'm really looking forward to that tour this summer, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Like, it's gonna be like Hair Metal City and a bunch of bald-headed 50-something-year-old white dudes like me going, shout the devil! <laughs> but, uh, you know, I had all these tickets. I bought Rage Against Machine tickets, right? I bought, um, I bought Rage Against Machine tickets. I got the Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Poison, Joan Jett tickets. Um, what else did I get? I got, um... Oh yeah, you know what else I got? Only because I think she's super cute and mega talented, but you're never gonna hear me singing her songs. You know whose you know who's tickets I got to? Come on, can you all guess? Now's your time to make fun of my heavy metal self. But she's a huge heavy metal fan, and I got mad respect for her. Come on, tell me who I got tickets for, come on. Can you guess? But you know that show's gonna get canceled too. Come on. I know somebody kn knows who I got these tickets for. So I got Rage tickets. I got, no, not Ariana, but there is two A's and there's three A's in her name. Yes, just like Ariana, but it's not Ariana. Susan Steinberger. Look at that. Somebody with the same initials that I have. Joe Elliott of Def Leppard. He li Wait. Joe Elliott of Def Leppard lives in Ireland, right? You know, all those British rock stars that live over there say, get away from paying the taxes. Isn't that true? No, I got Lady Gaga tickets. La, 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 la. <laughs> yes. Yes. I saw the Stones last summer, and, and uh, I was thinking about going to see them in Detroit this summer. Because um, it's like an hour and a half flight to Detroit. They're playing it inside stadium. I was like, well, shit, I could do that. Here, let me go check on the mannequin. I'll be right back. So yeah, Lady Gaga is pretty badass, actually. So, here I got, she's pretty much dried almost all the way. I'm just gonna use the dryer for two seconds just to get the bottom. Let's see, here we go. There we go. So I let her dry under the um, hood dryer with, I'm really into this new product from 
the Wilson Hair Collective. And if you all know who Philip Wilson is, he's um, definitely an inspiration and a mentor of mine. I've known him for a few years. And he has a new product line out and I was using, and I don't work for him. He doesn't pay me. I just happen to like this stuff. So it's a product called Don't Stress It, which is a um, leave-in conditioner, and I use that as a cutting lotion. And this other product I used called Style Both Ways, it's a cream gel. So as you can see, we went, eh, I just need to dry just a tiny little bit more. So I just put that in the hair and I put her under the dryer and you can see short to long it's building up that shape back here same thing in the back and then the layer everything was worked on a pivot like a beach ball all the way around to achieve fullness in the back. Now there's a lot of things you could do. This is like the fun time. Thank you, sir. This is the fun time, right? This is like, what are we gonna do now? And everybody's got their own thing that they like to do, right? Everybody's got their own kind of personal feeling that they like to put into their haircuts and what they do. And I'm probably gonna take that fringe even make it a little bit crazier, but one of the things on a mannequin, like you see how it, see how these things bow out all the time right here? And you know if you cut it too short, it's going to um, stick out. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just kind of chisel it down. And I don't want to commit to too much of a um, layer into it. Like I don't want to come back, even though I could, and cut that a little bit flatter. Because I still want to maintain certain aspects of this haircut, including the, um, this little bit of length that I'm gonna work with. So I learned this technique from uh, Robert Labetta, actually. I watched him do a haircut once and um, he was just doing this and I thought it was the coolest thing I'd seen in a long time. You know, a lot of innovative people have come out over the years that, you know, it's a, um, how can I put it? It's almost generationally speaking, like, you know, people that you really admire, like certain hair cutters and certain things that you like to see. So for me, you know, obviously Christopher Brooker, Trevor Sorby, um, these are kind of like my hair heroes growing up. You know, I really like those guys. The Sassoon, of course. Um, I was a huge, believe it or not, a big Desange fan at one point. I really loved, um, so there's Jacques Desange, who, be right back. So, so Jacques Desange is this big time French hair cutter like back in the day, right? And he had a guy working for him named Bruno Pettini. And Bruno Pettini took Jacques' last name as a tribute and opened up a bunch of salons called Bruno Desange. And he did these really beautiful, super feminine haircuts. And 
What I liked about them is they were just kind of messy and they got out of bed and they just looked really cool. And they didn't have the, um, they didn't have quite the precision or the exactness of what I had been looking at for years. And I was inspired and I wanted to kind of change up my game a little bit, right? And then, you know, through the time there was some, um, saw other hair cutters and other people that I really, really admired. And John Sahag was one of them. And uh, Robert Lobetta was another one. And, I mean, Robert Cromies is definitely somebody that I really enjoy watching. Kind of mind blowing that this guy does this massive, large format haircutting and it's just gorgeous, right? So whatever really kind of floats your boat, things change. But I always stick, like a lot of my foundation work has always been definitely precision. Sorry about my big old light bulb head getting in the middle. Can y'all see that okay? I'm just gonna move the comments away from the side, so. The, um, I think I can zoom this a little bit. No, I can't. I guess I can't. So, I thought I could. So really, I'm just sculpting away through the surface of the shape. Hope y'all are enjoying this. Been a lot of fun. I love doing these kind of haircuts. And if you're just joining me, I did a round layered haircut. And if you don't know what a round layered haircut is, it's when you're working from short to long this way to the crown and then you pivot like a beach ball all the way around to the back. And then your cross check is from your last section cut in the back all the way back to the front and then you go back up. And now I'm just kind of chiseling it away, some of the shape and creating just kind of a different look to it. And as you can see, I just take my, I clip a lot of stuff out of the way so that you can see what's happening. Um, let me see more in the back. Can you see, can y'all see that okay? Is that better? So again, I'm just kind of freehanding. If y'all have any questions or comments, I love to hear from you. I love to hear how you all are doing through all this craziness in the world and what you're doing to keep yourselves busy and occupied. I think for me, it's like if my hands aren't busy, I'm losing my, I'm losing my mind a little bit. So again, I'm gonna switch here to this side now. It's my cousin Susan right there. Hello. Hey, Laura. You'll see, okay. So I'm just, just to take my shear and I keep forgetting I've got this mirror right in front of me too. I'm just kind of chipping into my shape and bringing it down. I should flat iron this bit a little bit more and kick it out so I can get a good idea of what's happening right there. It's always great when we're working in the salon, we have so many different phones in 
dialed in and we're able to Bluetooth music and everything is so damn quiet right now. So, hello. So I'm just kind of just chiseling down. Can you all see that okay? I love being able to kind of like go back through my shape once I've cut it and kind of adjusting things the way that I see it. And you can see like right here. Just kind of make it a little bit less bulbous, but still maintaining the integrity of the round layered haircut. Although some people would say, it's a mullet. I love mullets. All right, so this portion is done. I'm going to come back through and kind of lighten some more up. You can see it's like what we did is when I, uh, I didn't blow dry her really. I just put some sculpting product in her hair and I sat her under the dryer for a couple minutes. But now I've got this fun thing to work with. This is a a razor, it's made by a company called Via, and it's a spin razor, so it spins. It has a little piston in there. Got this from my friend, Philip Wilson. And um, I really should have worn a white shirt today, damn. If you ever work in the salon and you can't see your proportion, voila. Just so you get a good idea. Mm, I think I'm going to just hit it with a flat iron real quick. Yeah, I got that big old crockety crock flat iron from Keratin Complex years ago. Did a whole bunch of Keratin treatments for years. You would think that with everything that I smoked over the years, right? Yes, everything I smoked, cigarettes and everything else, and the keratin treatments, <clears throat> that'd be coughing it up, right? Thank God, no. I'll tell you what, quitting cigarettes is probably the hardest thing I ever did. So I'm just going to flatten this out just a little bit. What I love about using a flat iron on a mannequin head is that a lot of times you get that more of, um, you get that nice compressed, softer texture so that when you want to really cut into it, it's like cutting paper. And I love the look of hair when it's cut like that. Because you can really kind of shred into it. Fire a heavy metal guitar player. Shredder. And you can see this is like a lot of this texture that was cut into it like that and this is stuff just you know as I go through the haircut 
and I'll lift into it. All right, so we got that. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna flat the front out just a little bit more right here. I'm lucky she can't talk back. She's like, I wish this guy would get that thing away from my face. So how many of you are lucky enough to be ambidextrous with your blow drying? Me, I have to use my right hand with the brush because I have no control with my left hand. Anyone? I'm gonna go back to cutting in a second. I just wanted to manipulate the texture of the hair because I really like a really crisp, especially with using a mannequin. The texture on a mannequin is such a pain in the butt. Yes. So just to show you up close, I really love this kind of texture that the flat iron's going. Amy, you are super lucky because my uncoordinated fat fingers can't do it. But the funny thing was, is when I used to box, I would always fight southpaw. And I'm right-handed. So, you know, strangely enough, it's probably cause I like the power that my jab had with my right hand. That's what makes sense. Oh, no, yeah, that's usually how it works, right? So here you go, you see that I'm just getting this all kind of flattened out just for the texture of it. And I'm gonna go back to out of the way. All right then. So, I have a little fun now. Let's make sure that, okay. Oh, nope. All right. Please bear with me. All right. So I'm just going to razor some of that face framing texture a little bit more. Just so that when she wakes up in the morning and her, she doesn't have any makeup on and her hair looks amazing. <laughs> Me and my funny dad jokes, right? Yeah. Well, not really, not a dad joke, this one. I'm just gonna, let's see. You know, I really wish I could have her tilt her chin back, but not gonna happen. Hmm. You should be able to get all that kind of texture into the shape. You can see just kind of working this and you're always good like you can get your hands into it, kind of feel it out. If you want to see, again, I should have like, so I've got the white wall behind me, but if you're not, if you don't have that situation and you want to stand like you can stand and look at it that way. Yes, yes, the head comes off. All right. 
And so we do this over here and really just wanted to kind of cut into it. I mean, it looks really good anyways, but like I said, my OCD is, gets the best of me every time. Oh, you are too kind. Thank you so much, Marianne. So now I'm gonna lift her up a bit more because I need to be able to see more so like right through here. And I didn't touch the baseline at all, right? I didn't cut anything on that. I'm gonna go back to um, these Wilson shears. And I'm just going to tap the comb, tap the hair in the comb. And the idea is so that I have support while I'm cutting. Can you see that okay? I'm cutting that shape into it and kind of breaking that bit up. And do the same thing right here. And a lot of times I leave stuff like this for the very end of the haircut. Just whether it's perimeter work or, you know, but again, like you see right here, right? Let me see, can we get her twisted a little bit more? So now, I'll just bring this out. Just cut that a little bit more so it's not too square. And then the same thing. So just going from this bit of a corner hmm. and you can see it's just the haircut's almost like a mini kind of shag, in a way, lightly using that term. So. Let's see. It's like a big bib, I'm going out and eating lobster or something, right? I think I'm going to cut the front a little bit more. She's like, oh my God, he cut my bangs too short. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Zach Radcliffe, how are you? Zach's dad and I played in a band many years ago.
But it's cool, like, you know, in this situation, so the hair was dried under a hood dryer. And I really have the opportunity to kind of, the texture that we were left with from it and then to cut into it a bit more. Oh, thank you so much, Azra. Is it Salimovich? Is that how you pronounce it? Definitely want to be brave when you're doing this. This fringe is a very personal thing. Some people like to hide behind it. Some people want it off their face completely. And there goes the counter. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Yeah, I definitely love doing these kind of rock and rolly, rock and roll type of haircuts. And I got a friend of mine from London and I was like, I always wanted to goof off with them. And like, I would see these British guys cut hair and they'd be like, taking my neck section vertically, removing the excess weight like so. And I was like, man, I need to practice that. Yeah, so it's definitely a fun haircut to have. You know, and it's really easy. I mean, it's, there's nothing hard about this haircut. Yeah, I'll see that good. I had the most amazing compliment paid to me the other day from somebody I really respect industry wise I didn't even know he was paying attention and I was like wow it totally made my day and this guy's like a legend I think it's the time, like, y'all know who Rob Halford is? So Rob Halford is the singer of Judas Priest, which is one of my favorite bands growing up. Hey, Kristen, how are you? And my demo got in the hands of Rob Halford, and he contacted me. And it was uh, pretty amazing to have, like, your hero um, contact you on your music. So every once in a while when you get like your, somebody that you really admire in whatever you're passionate about, whether it's um, hairdressing or music or designing clothes or f cooking or whatever you do, and you get like it something from these people, you're like, whoa. Mind blowing, right? So, I'm pretty much almost done. I'll just have to um, put my signature in. No, I'm not gonna write it in, I'm just kidding. So my signature is something I learned from Trevor Sorby years ago. If y'all don't know who Trevor Sorby is, he is the architect of the Wedge of Le Chop. Um, many amazing hairdressers like Antoine, Antoinette Beenders and um, who's the guy from Daveness? Both the guys from Daveness worked for him and um, Damien Carney worked at Trevor Sorby. I mean, all these like legendary hair cutters, legendary hairdressers, Damian Carney being probably the most amazing one I've ever met. 
Okay, you ready? I love doing this surfacey texture. I love just cutting it up. People are like, holy cow. Hairdressers get really scared of this. I'm like, just do it. So, just gonna drop her a little bit. And continue. Kristen, I really enjoyed your, um, if you're still watching, I really enjoyed your um, air touch balayage on the Revlon Pro page. Kristen came to my salon once. She lives in um, Canada and uh, did a Revlon, little Revlon class here once. Hey, Patty Reed. And she is an amazing hairdresser. Mind blowing. Does stuff that I could never dream of doing. Like all I wanna do is go to Canada and hold her tray, just pins and brushes and stuff, and watch her do hair. So again, Just surface cutting, channel cutting, whatever the technique that you grew up with it. I learned it as surface cutting. I believe the Paul Mitchell people call it channel cutting. And let's see, can we spin her around this way? Yes, we can spin her around this way. Can you all see okay? All right, so, been here, on here for a while, cutting this, and I would just love to say thank you to all of you that joined in and were watching. It's a good time, so this is just a bit of a recap. Real quick. It's probably dinner, no, is it dinner time? I don't know what time it is. So, round layered haircut, working from short to a fuller crown, apex crown. And what you do is you are, you cut the top, but you wanna pivot. So, we're going like this, going like this, going like this, until you get to the back and then you drop it down into the side. Same thing. Same thing. All the way around. And on both sides. So what it does is the shorter hairs build up a round shape when everything is brought back. So it's a rounder shape, so it's a fuller shape in the back. Yes, you could call it a mullet if you want to. It's such a bad word. But then I did a lot of manipulation of the weight and used a few various techniques where you chip into the hair like this and surface cut it across like a artichoke pattern and use my razor a little bit. The um, products that I used were the new Wilson Collective Don't Stress It Conditioning Spray. 
and I also used another product called Style Both Ways, which is like a cream. And I don't work for them, they're not paying me to say it. I just um, love supporting independent companies that are small, smaller I should say. And uh, Philip's a great dude, he's an amazing educator, I learned so much from him. And the method of, the Wilson method of haircutting has definitely changed my life and the way that I do hair and the way that I uh, do a lot of things actually. So. As you can see, so we're pretty much, I let the hair dry under a dryer. And then I dried a couple minutes of it at the very bottom. And I'm gonna finish it off with a little, um, because of the texture of the hair, I'm gonna use a little bit of some clay. So what I like to do with the clay, so you can see I've got that much, and I just kind of get it emulsified in my hands, and I like to work it through everything first. I don't like to spot product into the hair, and I like to start off with a little bit so I don't kind of um, overdo it. Let me just lift her up a little bit more. I'm short, but this is a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> so, I've always kind of loved these kind of choppy fronted, edgy textured haircuts. If this were a real person, I uh, probably would have cut the front completely off. But you know what the mannequin's gonna do if you do that. Not fun. So, again, just kind of working. I like to use the comb. And this comb's got a bit of a notch in it. Right there. And I use it to kind of work the texture around. Could use a little bit more product. But I think I'm good. But you can see it's a nice kind of rounded shape. Let me put this behind it so you can see a little bit better. You see how the top is, this is all rounded and it's rounded into here. Now, Whether they want to wear it kind of out, I kind of like it. I kind of like it closer like this and then out a little bit on the perimeter. And what would be really cool is if we had more of like a, like for it's like say editorial purposes or styling, I would, I might even put so much product on that it would look wet and down on the head and a bit messy. Make it so y'all couldn't breathe, right? So, let's see. I can never see. I, I, should, I know I should have worn a white shirt today. I'm so blind. Yes, I'm going for lobster after this. I'm not. But, that's it. This is the look. More of a... It's definitely a rounded, layered shape haircut. 
longer in the back, part, business in the front, party in the rear. And I thank you all for joining me today. If you have um, any questions, any comments, you want to send me a message, I'm always, I always look forward to hearing from you all. And again, I'm Steven Statland. I'm here in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And uh, thanks again for watching. And I'll see you all again in the next day or two. And who knows, maybe I'll get around to bleaching this mannequin out and making it lime green or something. That could be fun, right? All right, I'll catch you all later and uh, take care.